Hello and welcome to episode two of Touchdown Point. Today we're discussing air traffic control. So first of all, I'd like to thank Liverpool John London Airport for their hospitality today, especially the air traffic control unit here. Spending the day with them has been very valuable indeed. First of all, we need to get the term air traffic control as a general term out of our head. Air traffic control is actually very specific and shouldn't be used as a general term. Instead, we should use the term air traffic service unit or ATSU as an umbrella term. So under this umbrella, we have three different types of air traffic service in the UK. Firstly, we've got air traffic control. We then have flight information, followed by air ground communication. It's very important for pilots to understand who they are talking to and what kind of service they are getting, because these services do vary. To help us understand what services uh, pilots are getting, we actually have the air traffic service unit cake. Now bear with me on this one. It's a three-layered cake, just like air traffic service units, as Dale just mentioned there. So we have cutting into the air traffic service unit. The top layer there, which is air traffic control. Now, Dale is much better qualified to introduce air traffic control and to mention all the different services they offer than I am. It's not my job, it's Dale's job, so I'll let him explain it to you. So, as David has uh, said as he's cutting to the cake, the top layer is air traffic control. Air traffic control is made up of air traffic controllers, believe it or not. These are fully trained and fully licensed by the Civil Aviation Authority. So, the clue is in the name from what you're getting, it's air traffic control. Air traffic controllers control aircraft, whether it be on the ground or in the sky, air traffic control have full control over all aircraft. Obviously this depends what class of airspace you're in, again we will cover that in a later video. You will know when you're talking to an air traffic control unit, because you'll be speaking to call signs such as tower, radar, approach, ground and if you're flying to somewhere really big you may even be lucky enough to get clearance delivery. Going back to the cake analogy, the next layer of the cake is flight information. As David does this as a job, I'll let him introduce this. Yes, yeah, so as Dale mentioned, flight information service is the next layer in the cake, that's the middle layer you see here. And uh, actually most of the airspace in the UK, at lower levels really, is uncontrolled airspace. So a lot of airfields are actually in airspace that's not controlled. And that will actually surprise the public quite a lot because they think of, like we mentioned, an umbrella term as air traffic control. Now, flight information service don't have control in the air. So whereas Dale has control on the ground and in the air in his airspace, flight information don't. The clue is in the name information. They only give information to aircraft in flight for the safe conduct of flight. Now, on the ground, flight information still have control. So they'll control traffic on the ground, taxiing up to and including the holding points. Beyond the holding point, it's all up to the pilot to make their own decision. And this can be based on the information that the flight information service officer, which is the person sat in the tower, gives the pilot. And the next layer in the cake is air ground communication service. And then they will be mentioning that to you. So the bottom layer of the cake is air ground communication. You'll know if you're talking to one of these uh, stations because they have a call sign at radio. We've mentioned it is the bottom layer of the cake, but it is still an important role as it does give the, the airfield a frequency to use. In air traffic, we are all a team and we do all work together, whether that be a big tower, a big radar unit, or just a small airfield with some general aviation aircraft there. So what are you going to get from a radio operator? Well, sometimes you may actually get nothing at all. The person manning the radio may be working in the cafe, taking book outs. He may even be doing a runway inspection. So if you do call one of these stations, you'll get an answer. Don't be disheartened, just listen out, maybe even just do a couple of orbits in the overhead till you get your bearings, and you can also look at the signal square. That is what it's there for, and again, we'll be covering this in a later video. If you are lucky enough to get an answer from the unit, well, what will they be giving you? Well, basically they'll be giving you the runway in use and probably the surface wind when you call final approach. So that wraps up episode two of Touchdown Point. Thanks for watching and again, thanks to Liverpool John Lennon Airport for letting us film here today and thanks to all the guys and girls in air traffic. It's been a really good day, really insightful and we've really enjoyed it. In the meantime, if you have any questions that you may want answering, drop us a message. Our contact details are in the description below. You can also visit touchdownpoint.co.uk. In aviation, there's always something new to learn and we're looking forward to learning with you. Until next time, stay safe and happy flying.